Welcome to episode number 135 of What Does This Button Do? It's an educational show about smartphones and tablets with us, Geeks on Tour. I'm Chris. This and, is Geek. And I'm Jim. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Before we get into it, our beginner's lesson today will be copying flash drive files to Macs, Windows, iPhones, Androids, but first, a quick tip. What do you have there, Chris? All right. My tip today, I want to just make sure everybody knows how to find our newsletters and what is in them. So our newsletters is Geeks on Tour. And for nearly 10, for over 10 years, for over 10 years, we have done a monthly newsletter. And then we send notices out when there's something new to see on our website all, more, almost once a week. But our monthly newsletter has been going on since 2007. And I want you to know how to get there. So first of all, it's geeksontour.com. That's our website. And then it is blogs and news, and there is newsletters right there. And you can sign up right there. All you need to do is put your email and your name. We'd like to know how you heard about us, but sign me up. Then here you go, February, January, December, and each newsletter has at least three tips. So you can click on that and find. So for example, here's USB for iPad. One of the things we're going to be talking about today. If you go all the way down to the bottom, it's September 2013, but then there are more archives that go on beyond that back to, back to 2007. So that's, that's it. I just want you to know about our newsletter. Every, every month we tell a little bit about where we are and what we're doing and then give three tips, at least three tips. So please sign up. And then I also have a, oh, all articles. See, that's why I make notes, remind myself. <laughs> I'm glad you So know. if we go back <clears throat> to the website and where it says all articles, this is where each and every article from the newsletter is listed separately. And you can find anything for pretty much the past 10 years. And we're spinning and we're spinning. Okay, all articles. <laughs> Oh, well. And then once you're at the page that lists all articles, for example, you might want to search instead of looking over all 500 of them or 400 of them, you could do a search, which you do with a control F. And for example, find something like our article on internet in Cuba. Here we go. Here are all the individual articles. And if you do a control F, it opens up a window up in the top and you can type Cuba. And there you can see our article for internet in Cuba. And you can do this on a smartphone too. Same, exact same thing, just smaller screen. Now, can I do my, <laughs> my uh, yeah. photo edit? Photo edit for the day, okay. okay. So I need to get over to, and this is actually using Snapseed. I'm going to start in Google Photos, but the, the feature I'm going to use is actually in Snapseed, which is a companion. I love Snapseed. I, I, I use it a lot. And we actually taught a real class in it this last week. That's why it's fresh in my mind. <clears throat> yeah, it was a lot of fun because it has, it's so powerful of an editor. It just does pretty much anything that you need to do with your pictures that you've taken with your smartphone. Snapseed is the tool that just goes on beyond Google Photos editing capabilities. So the, the picture I'm talking about is this one right here of our wonderful little motorhome, our road trek at Fort 
Fort... Uh, Fort DeSoto. Fort DeSoto, great <laughs> RV uh, park in over by Tampa. But I remember the colors being much more vivid. That's I got up early in the morning to get this sunshine shot, sunrise shot. So I tap on the three dot menu and open in Snapseed. And then on tools. And there's some great tools just in the first one here called Tune Image. If you've never used Snapseed, this is this is the trick part right here, is you slide up and down to pick the individual option. Ambiance is the one that I've discovered is my, my favorite. <laughs> New favorite. And then you swipe right and left to get more or less. So see how that's just bleh. <laughs> but if I if I rub all the way over to the right, now that is a beautiful picture. And I can say check mark, I'm done. And then export this and save and modify. And when I go back to Google Photos, it, it takes a minute, but I will see a second closer. A second picture. That's annoying. It sure it is. A second picture that Oh, well, there we go. It's uh, it's adjusted, and we see the more brilliant colors. Okay, so that is the photo edit for today. Well, cool. And this is our show. So, I'm Jim, and here together with my wife, Chris, we are Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your Android phone or your iPad tablet? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks who teach and learn and learn and learn and learn. <laughs> <laughs> and we think the best way to learn is on a, in a bite-sized pieces on a regular basis. So that's why we came up with this show. We just pick a topic each week and we encourage people to watch it after I've done the show notes. If you remember, you get show notes and you can read through them. You can pause the video. If you watch us live, you can ask, ask your own questions. Our website is geeksontour.com and that's where you will find all of our content. And I want to say hi to a couple of our friends out there, Laverne and Debbie and Bill and Karen, if you're watching, I see one of you is here. And Bob Brown, how are things hey. in the cold Northeast? <laughs> All right. And Bill asks, how's the new little motorhome doing? Love it. Love it. We're having a great time with it. it had, it's really been wonderful. So, yeah. Yeah. But we also like one of the main reasons we love it is because we can be home more also. <laughs> so, that's cool. Yeah. So on today's show, we're going to be talking about copying files from a flash drive. Now, these little devices, we call them thumb drives, we call them flash drives, jump drives, USB. Uh, there are so many different names for these little devices, and there are so many different styles and features that come along with them. So if you have questions during the show, Go ahead and use the YouTube chat window. And by Wednesday afternoon, this episode should be up on geeksontour.com slash weekly class, along with the class notes for the members. All right. She's going to get into it now. We've been busy these last few weeks. <laughs> Orlando, Tampa, Frostproof, Arcadia, and tonight we leave for LaBelle. Right, and we have a couple of days of teaching over at an RV resort called Riverbend. And so that's that's been fun, but it's close enough that we got to come home to be in our home studio to do the show. <laughs> eh, we'll see how that works out. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, and you already... Yeah. Well, Tom Park says hi, and hey. Bob says it's chilly for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's warm here. It is really nice here. So, Chris, our beginner's lesson, copying files from a flash drive. What do you think? Okay, so, yeah, this, <laughs> this lesson plan went through, <laughs> went through many, 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 many iterations. 
I'm thinking of people who still need to learn about copying files just within a computer. And then there's so much new stuff to know about files on mobile devices and how, what do I choose and fit that into 20 minutes? So what I came out with is just talking about thumb drives, flash drives, and copying to the four different types of other devices that we have now. So what do I mean by flash drive? It's, uh, and then people have different reasons. Why do they need to know about these little guys, Tim? Well, what? they're, <laughs> because sometimes people give you a file that they want you to have and they give it to you on a thumb drive or a flash drive like this. And what do you do with it? it it's kind of tough because it doesn't have the right end to go into a, a phone. There are a lot of different reasons that they might give you a flash drive. I think of the movies that say, here's all the secrets of the world, guard this with your life. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the first thing you're gonna do is drop it down the toilet, right? So <laughs> one thing to learn is how to copy the entire contents of the thumb drive to a computer. Now, our particular reason for doing this is these thumb drives have our entire learning library on it. And we, we sell these, and at some of the rallies that we were at in the last month, a lot of people bought them, and I want them to know how to use them. So we are going to copy the entire contents to a Mac, to a Windows, and then I'll just copy some files to an iPad and to an Android phone. It sounds like fun. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now I do not have a Mac in front of me. I do have a Mac upstairs. So what, uh, what we're gonna do is show you a little video. So here's a summary of what I just talked about. People will give you important files on a flash drive, or you might have some important files, you know, birth certificate and passport documents and stuff like that on a flash drive that you want to have with you at all times. And that's what having them on your phone is, is good for. Now, and our flash drive, you can buy from geeksontour.com and store. And for $79, we have our entire library, 500 videos, 134 show notes, seven, seven ebooks, e uh, all of our, our seminar handouts and some other stuff. So there's like 10 gigabytes worth of stuff on this. We even have a few of these complete shows. We do because they're now, what are, what 16 are gigs, 16 gigabyte. <laughs> so we can afford the space to put some entire, what does this button do shows on it? I think we have six on there. So the basic steps to copy, to copy anything anywhere when it comes to computers is step one, open and view your content. So open the flash drive to view the content. Step two, select the contents and copy. I do it with a right click and copy. You might like control C on a Mac, that would be command C. Step three <laughs> is open a destination folder. So make sure to get where you <laughs> want to go. And you can make a new folder if you want and open that if you want a new folder for your contents. Then the last step is make sure you're in the new location and you paste. Now, you can also drag and drop. If, for those of you who do this all the time, if you've been in computers for a while like us, this is absolutely second nature. But a lot of people new to computers don't know how to do this. So you could just drag and drop. And I like that. It's easy, but it's dangerous. So especially <laughs> if you're a beginner, it's so easy to, to slip. And to drop. slip. <laughs> I've done it. And drop things off and never be able to find them again. <laughs> so I really like to copy. copy, move to your new location and paste. It's a lot more control. So that's, so that's what we're gonna do. And here is where I say, we don't have a Mac in the studio to demonstrate with. So I did a little video and we'll show you the video. And since you can't hear sound from the video, I will talk over it. 
And this is on an old Mac, but it has the latest operating system, so everything should be fine. And if you ever want to review this, it's on our website, number 506. So you insert the flash drive into USB on your Mac. You double click the drive icon and select everything, go to where you want it, and then paste. So there's the drive inserted into the Mac. As soon as you insert it, you see something pop up on your desktop. In this case, it says Geeks on Tour. Yours might say something else, or it might even say no name. But whatever popped up is the representation of the thumb drive that you just plugged in. If you double click to open it, you will see the contents. You see that in a window that is called the Finder. So to maneuver through files and folders on the Mac, you use the Finder. So step one then is to make sure that you are looking at the contents of that Geeks on Tour drive and you see it on the leftmost column, Geeks on Tour, and there are all the contents. So select all and you do that just by dragging over it or you can do a command a to select all the contents so remember what we're trying to accomplish here is copying the entire contents of the thumb drive onto the max hard drive so that we don't have to worry about losing the thumb drive and they play faster too then you right click and choose copy and it tells you how many items you're copying in this case it's 10 folders, not 10 items all told. And then you go to where you want them. So I just clicked where it said Chris Gould and home over on the right hand side there. And then I did a right click and new folder Geeks on Tour. Now with Geeks on Tour selected, I right click and choose paste 10 items. Now notice it says it's copying 500 and some odd items, meaning all the contents of the folder. And it says that will take about 10 minutes. So let's wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to wait for 10 no, minutes. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I paused it or speeded it up or something here. So once that's done, from now on, if you wanted to play a video that came from the thumb drive, you would go to your finder and click on your home folder, in my case, Chris Gould, find the Geeks on Tour folder. And as long as you're in this column view, you will see the contents in the third column. Or if you are in grid view, you will see the different folders in a grid. You double click, find the video that you want to watch, and you're good to go. So that's how you copy a flash drive, insert the flash drive, double click the icon that appears, copy everything, and then move to a new folder and paste. Cool. And those are the same steps that you do regardless of, of the device. Okay. So now we're gonna do that same thing. So that was, that was a Mac. And if you have done that before on your own Mac by dragging and dropping. I mean, Mac likes drag and drop even more than, than Windows does. Yep. And that's perfectly fine. If you're comfortable with drag and drop, do it. I just think copy and paste gives you more control, especially for beginners. All right. So now here is the thumb drive. Oh, it's green. <laughs> Here is the thumb drive with all of our content on it. And I'm going to put it into the Windows computer. So let's see if I can kind of show you that for. So there, you just have the USB port and you put it in. And now on the computer screen. By the way, the mic's off. To turn it back on, slide the switch on the back of Google Home. <laughs> and on the computer screen, on Windows, it popped up a little message in the lower right-hand corner and that said, what do you want to do with this? And since I ignored it, it went away. The 
program on Windows to manage files is called File Explorer. And it is this yellow folder down the bottom. And I click on it. Now, how do you know what it is? You need to be looking at this PC. And then you should see Geeks on Tour D drive. Now, if you're working with a different kind of thumb drive and it doesn't have a name, the only way to know for sure which one it is is to take it out and something will disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Plug it back in and something will reappear. <clears throat> Whatever reappear is the contents you're looking for. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. So to see, the, so we're doing the same four steps, remember? Open the source, copy the files. Go to the destination paste the files. So I double click to open the Geeks on Tour. I control A to select all files. I can control C or right click and copy to copy all files. Now I can go to where I want, which will be, I'll just put it under my name and make a new folder either by clicking that icon up in the top or right click and new folder and call it geeks on door and i just enter i just tapped enter two times there to open it up so now i know i am inside the destination folder and i can right click and paste and once again this will take a while and i actually don't want to bother so i'm going to cancel it but those those are the steps and once they are complete you don't need the thumb drive in order to play the videos or read or read the documents very handy yeah so then what's next so that now let's back up a little bit and talk about some terminology and stuff like so I talk about files and folders, and I hear some newbies getting confused on these terms. So I want to make sure you understand that the folder is, a, is the container. The file is the thing that is being stored. And one folder can contain many files, but a file is one thing. It's a document, a picture, a spreadsheet, videos, etc. Now, where are these files and folders? Very important to know. Yeah, where, where do they go? Well, they go on computers. They can go on external hard drives. They can go on the little external drives, the flash drives. They can also go on mobile devices and on SD cards or in cloud storage. And we use all of these. We do. <laughs> But cloud storage is becoming more and more the preferred place to put stuff. So all of my photos are in cloud storage on Google. All of our business files are in Dropbox. In Dropbox. Mm -hmm. But they're not just in the cloud. They're in the cloud and synchronized to our computer and possibly backed up to a thumb drive. Right. Or a or an external hard drive. So I have an external hard drive connected to my rig laptop and it does automatic backups using Windows. It's built in and I don't have to worry about the backups on that and I can get them anytime. But for working with your files, cloud is just so convenient. And we've done one, two, three, four, five other what does this button do episodes about different cloud options and we will be doing more but there's if you want to review how to use onedrive or how to use dropbox find those previous episodes so that's storage locations all right now how do you access those locations well what i just showed you on windows and mac is you use File Explorer on Windows to access your files and folders. On Mac, you use 
Finder. <clears throat> but what about mobile devices? I mean, we say they are pocket computers, but they're different when it comes to files. There may be no software on your phone or tablet that lets you see files. It's all about apps on smartphones and tablets. Apps can help have their own files, but there's no generic way of seeing all the files that are on a device. Now, Android, Samsung does has forever come with something called My Files. And your Google phone recently put out, what is that, Go Files? Files Go. Files Go, files but that's an go. Android app. It's not just for my phone. Okay, yeah, Files Go. I installed it on my Samsung, yeah. I think. Um, and iPhones, iOS, iPhones and iPads recently with iOS 11 came out with a app called Files. And I thought, oh, okay, now I'll be able to look and see what's on my iPhone, what's on my iPad. No, that's not what it is. Files on iOS is an app for managing all your cloud storage files and folders. It's cool. It's, it's, it's really quite cool, but it's not what you think it is. It's not what I thought it was. Uh, so if your files and folders are on an external drive or a flash drive or an SD card, there's no inherent way to see them. You need to plug it into something. And the software you use will depend on what you plug it into. All right. So how how do you plug in a USB? <laughs> I should have gotten a different color besides green. How do you <laughs> plug in a USB file drive to a phone? You know, that connector won't fit in that slot. So there's, there's actually several options. You can either get a special thumb drive like, like this one. This, this one's really a trip. Um, it looks like a regular thumb drive there, right? I can mm -hmm. just plug that into the computer. But if I just push, slide it to the other side, there it is a, an Apple lightning adapter. Lightning, lightning adapter. But if there's even more <laughs> on this side that looks like a regular computer USB, it it folds back and reveals a micro USB that would go into an Android. Wow. <laughs> now, wait, I haven't. No sound. I actually haven't had the best of luck with this one. I prefer the, now here's one that we have had a lot of luck with. This is a USB drive that can plug into a computer, but on this end, it has the lightning and that works really well. Now these cost a bit more than, than these. Oh yeah. But what about 20 bucks more? So let's, let's try it. Oh, and then the last way is with a wireless network. So our favorite, and we did a video on this and a whole other episode, is this little device called the Hutu. And if you plug, if you plug the drive into it and push a button, it does a wireless network that I can connect my iPad, my iPhone, and you could connect, you know, we could be watching different videos on this same thumb drive because it's created a, a network with all the files that are on that drive. It can be real handy. So that's, you can even plug in, I have my whole <coughs> little set of show and tell here. You can even <laughs> plug in a whole external hard, a terabyte hard drive into this. Right. And it gets its power from that too, because that is a 
battery backup. Right. It's pretty Power. amazing. Power. I think that's probably why this little drive doesn't work very well for in my experience, it needs some power to, to push that data to the device. Okay, now I want to try, uh, show you with iPad. So the iPad would be a great way to watch the Geeks on Tour tutorial videos while you're working with your phone or your computer or, or some other tablet. So wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to have an internet connection and you could watch the videos from the iPad at any time you wanted? Are you listening to us on this? No. No. Okay. Laverne is saying there's no sound. I forgot to put my ear on. I have sound. Yeah. They I have too. sound. Okay. I'm, I'm hearing it in here. So. Okay. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I get a message on, on the chat here that says somebody doesn't have sound and I don't know why, sometimes it's on your end and sometimes it's on my end and I have no way of telling where it is. Okay. iPad. Thumb drive that went into a computer and received our entire 10 gigabytes of files, but it's a special thumb drive that has the lightning adapter. Lightning adapter. Thank you. So I just... That's my job, just to remember lightning adapter. <laughs> <laughs> Supply me with words. So I plug it in, and we get a message. And Chris is going to show us that message. Watch this. Okay. Hold my beer. The exposure is kind of there. App not installed. Right. So it's telling us that, okay, I see that you've plugged something in, but I don't know what to do with it. There we go. All right. But it's easy. It just steps you right through it. It says, okay, here, I know there's something there. You need to go get an app so I can work with it. So we go to the app store and it comes right up. I tap on the little cloud because I have it on my other devices. <laughs> and hopefully that won't take too long. Ah, pretty quick. So I USB. Pro, and I open it. Now that's something that came on that thumb drive, right? Or we're not no, sure. No, it can't. It, I had to go to the app store for it, but it, but the thumb drive had a link to it or something. All right. I don't really know well, <laughs> how it works. I just follow the instructions. The iPad knows <laughs> what to do. Okay, right. so we'll go with that. <clears throat> right. So I am now seeing the contents of this USB drive. And I don't have to copy anything if I don't want to. I can go to the videos and start watching the videos if I wanted to just from the thumb drive. But what I said we were going to do here was to copy. So I'm going to go, I'm going to back up and notice the options down at the bottom. There's the iUSB refers to this, this drive. The iPad refers to internal contents of the iPad. So here are all my photos. And then the app refers to things that have been copied to the app. So that's where we're going to do it. We cannot in here copy to a folder on the iPad. It has to be within this app. So I go to iUSB and I say, let me see all the videos. And I want to copy some. So I see a menu item in the top right that says edit. And I can say, I just want some that are Google 
photos and I look and wherever I see GP and they're the higher number ones because they're the newer ones. So there's a GP one and there's a GP and there's a GP. Good enough. So those are three Google Photos videos. And I say I want to copy them. Take a look at the options down at the bottom of the screen. And there's copy. Then it says, OK, where is the destination? Well, they're already on the IUSB, so my only other choice is within the app. And, and I can make a new folder if I want. So I can make a folder you know, called Google Photos. Tutorials and save. Now I have to open that folder if I want to paste these videos inside it. Okay. So let's say I just open up my iPad again now. Where do I go to see those videos? Assuming that I don't even, I can even, I can even just unplug the, uh, the USB now, but those videos that I copied are in the USB app, Google Photos Tutorials, and I can watch them with no internet connection and without Hi, even having... On tour, and I want to show you a couple of things. <laughs> without even having the thumb drive plugged in. Cool. Okay, so that's iPad and iOS. And this is just an example. You know, there are other options. There are lots of other ways to do this. But what I showed you is using a specially adapted thumb drive and its companion app to copy things to the iPad. Cool. And the last one I'm going to show you is the Android. And this time, I'm going to use an adapter. So this device is not a thumb drive in itself. It is a USB connection on one end and a micro USB to put into an Android phone on the other end. So I take the thumb drive and put in here. And you may have noticed this says Samsung. So it's really kind of cool. When I plug it into my Samsung phone, it just pops right up with the native My Files app. Boom. You know, just as soon as I... Now, if yours doesn't do that, you know, your Android, first of all, maybe if it's not a Samsung, but there are settings for USB and you might see a notification up top that you need to change your USB settings if you want to copy files. But this one just popped right up and here are all the videos or let's say this time I want to get notes. I want to get the PDF files that are the show notes. I open that up and I don't see a way to select. Usually a long press there. See, I long press, opened up the boxes and I can say, I want the last five show notes. And then I need the three dot menu. Anytime you see a three dot menu, there's a menu there, copy. And now here, because this particular, uh, oh, no, I don't have a, this particular phone does have an SD card slot, but I apparently don't have an SD card in here right now. So I have to go to device storage and I'm going to put it in the download folder. I could create another one and just call it Geek Stuff. and open it up and paste. 
So now those five PDF files, and those could be any kind of PDF files, like your doctor's reports or uh, car registration or anything like that, that could be there. And that's my demo. Cool. So I copied some show notes from the flash drive to a Samsung, and I copied a couple of the short videos from the flash drive to the iPad. And then what, the way we didn't do it is with the wireless, the, which, is, which is actually our favorite. But this wireless device is another $40. Hmm. I think it's worth it. It does all sorts of stuff, <laughs> but it's, it's well worth it. Okay. Okay. I don't see any more questions here. Laverne says, oops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we had a couple of questions that came in beforehand. So let's see. <clears throat> What's the best way to transfer files from two external drives to a larger drive? You have to drag them to the computer desktop to save and then drag to the new external drive? Or can you drag files directly from one external hard drive to another if they're both connected to the same computer? Sure. <laughs> if they're both connected to the same computer, then they're like E and D. D drive and e. letters. <laughs> and you can just drag straight from one to the other. Yeah. But not everyone knows that. <laughs> so kind of obvious questions, but select multiple files, then copy, drag, and drop, or X copy. What is this talking about here? Having multiple Explorer windows open for the source and using them concurrently. Yes, if you open up two windows, even on the same drive, you can drag from one to the other. But that's what I say gets so dangerous. Yeah, it can be very dangerous. I, it, it's, it can just get so cluttered that you mistakenly drop it off places that you didn't want to. So I like working with one window. I copy from one, I move to another, and I paste. But I pasted this in here because I like that he this was an email that came in and he says, kudos for being such a happy couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Okay, <laughs> we invite you to become a member. If you are a member of Geeks on Tour, a paid member, you get all kinds of special benefits. Go to geeksontour.com and click on the link to become a member. And see our website, geeksontour.com. Click on the weekly class menu too, and scroll down to show all of the archives. Each one of these shows is up there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe, <clears throat> excuse me, YouTube, you will get notifications anytime we go in live and you will get notifications of that kind of stuff. Good. Like us on Facebook. And we will be on Facebook doing our Gabbing with the Geeks on Thursday at five. Right. So here's an app of the week that I found that goes right along with everything that we're talking about. It's an, it's an app, a file manager app for Android. And this one is kind of different in that it uh, gives you a lot of extra features uh, and will allow you to examine the files that are on your smartphone, your Android smartphone. It has all kinds of special things. Most people don't need as much power there, but it's also something that <clears throat> it has two panes. So sort of like what we were just talking about, having two windows open, it has a dual pane interface and the file manager provides a tool where you can manage the two windows and you can drag and drop files from one to the other. So you can, but it still allows you to do the copy and paste. So this is a free app. It's available from the Play Store, and it's it's one of the approved ones out there. It has a really good reviews, millions of downloads with with a lot of good reviews. It's a good app. I'm if you don't have anything or nothing came with your Android phone, this is probably a real good one to get. Yeah, sounds like it. Androids are a lot more open with letting you move things in and out 
and a lot of Androids have an SD card. So you got a lot of space in there to right. put some files and move some files around. One thing I didn't mention with the with the iPad, iPhone, and this particular thumb drive, it offers the ability right right on the menu to back up your photos. Oh, so if you get one of these, and these come in different capacities. These, This one happens to be a 16 gigabyte, and 16 gigabyte thumb drives these days are probably the smallest capacity that you can find in a store anymore. Pretty amazing. Yeah, so all you'd have to do to safely back up your photos, even if you have no internet connection and no expectation of any internet connection, you can just plug this in, tap the little menu item that says backup, and all your photos are now on this on this thumb drive. Tom wants to know how you use a flash drive on a Chromebook. And it's been our experience that you just plug it in and it'll pop up with the file manager that is that is part of the Chromebook. Yeah, the Chromebook has USB. Usually. And where, okay, so you're probably asking where do they get copied to? I'm pretty sure uh, they get copied to the downloads folder. Just the local, I don't know, good question. But then the next time you are online, it does synchronize with your Google Drive. So that's the thing. The Chromebooks do have local storage. A little, not a lot. Well, they're Sometimes. different sizes. That's ones. true, too. I mean, I did a whole week-long writing course, and I did all my writing on my Chromebook. And without it was an internet without connection. Without an internet connection. So that, that works fine. But whenever I did get an internet connection, then the synchronizing happened, so I felt safe. Good idea. Okay. Well, did you learn something? <laughs> we have some questions for you. Copying files on Windows is done using A, File Explorer, B, Internet Explorer, C, drag and drop. File Explorer or drag and drop, but even drag and drop is actually using File Explorer, but yeah, <laughs> File Explorer is the name. It used to be called Windows Explorer. Right. I like it better calling it File Explorer. Copying files on Macs is done with A, drag and drop, B, preview, or C, finder? Finder. True okay. or false, all smartphones have a native file management app. Nah. <laughs> nah, not all they, of them. They don't. Some, some do and some don't. And that's why my answer is it depends. It depends. <laughs> but we had a conversation about that. I think, I think there's two reasons. First... I don't think phones were ever really intended to be storage devices. Right. And, second, and computers were. And computers were. Right. right. And secondly, phones are a lot more secure. So even though there are files and folders in there. You know, I might not have access to them. They don't give us. Especially the apples. Yeah, apples are a lot more closed. So, Chris, name three ways to connect a flash drive to a mobile device with a special type of flash drive. One. With an adapter for your flash drive to the device. Okay. Or with a wireless device. Something like our, our travel modem. Okay. In addition to connecting the drive, what do you need to perform the copy? You need some kind of software. You need, you need an app. Okay. So once you've copied the file to your phone or tablet, how do you view it? The My Documents, the camera roll, or in the app that did the copying? Well, as you always say, it depends. <laughs> but if there's an app for that, it probably is in that app. But of these choices, it's C. Okay. And true or false, if you understand computer filing systems, you'll understand smartphones. I don't think so. <laughs> because it's different. In, in fact, it almost hurts, not helps, <laughs> because it's, so, it's very app-oriented, not files and folders-oriented. All right. 
Okay, Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows? Geeksontour.com, and the menu item is Weekly Class. And the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters? Geeksontour.com, and the menu item is Blogs and News. How about the benefits you get by joining Geeks on Tour? Our complete learning library of all videos, guides, notes, books, <laughs> asking questions in our member Q&A forum, and I already listed everything. <laughs> okay, that's all you get then. Next time, is this up? Nope. Nope. Didn't update this one. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> I stop at review questions. Well, that's it for us for this week. Happy Valentine's Day for all you guys and girls out there. And we'll see you next time. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we are Geeks on Tour. Keep pressing those buttons. What does this button do? Don't do that. <laughs> Here What's we go. What does this button do? I don't know. <laughs>